Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that really helps to get my channel promoted and I appreciate it. I'd also love it if you'd leave a comment. Today's video is one that I recorded a while back. Uh, my mom had an aquamarine ring and she asked me if I wouldn't mind taking the stone out and creating a setting for a gift for a relative. And so that's what I did in this video. Hope you enjoy it. Um, before we get started on it, I wanted to uh, make sure to thank some people. I wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon. They're a great group of people who've been very supportive in my channel, and I appreciate all of that support, uh, both financial as well as uh, just the kind things that they tell me. So thanks for that, you guys. Uh, the other group is my YouTube subscribers. We just passed 10,300, which is amazing. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate uh, your kind comments as well. I get such nice comments in the comment section. And I do also appreciate those uh, financial contributions that help with the uh, raw materials like the buy me a coffee and the super things. Those things are really helpful. Thanks for that. All right, let's get started on this one. So here is the ring that my mom gave me to remove the stone from. And I think what I'm going to do, this is drawing isn't exact, I'm going to change it after talking to my mom again about this. Uh, this is for uh, her grandniece, I believe, and it's an aquamarine, it's about a 14 by 10. And uh, it's in a gold setting, I'm going to remove it from that and try to damage the setting as little as possible. Um, and hopefully not damage the stone, but uh, we'll do the best we can there. She wants, uh, she gave me this chain that had another little thing on it that she got somewhere. And, and she wanted me to use this, uh, this necklace for it. And we'll see, I might be able to do that. But it's split already, so I'll have to cut this off of here and then uh, change my bail plan here. Have something sticking off the top and then have some rings attached to it, maybe. Uh, I was going to do uh, kind of one of those sandwich bales that I do sometimes. It's got two layers with uh, something pushing, uh, holding it apart down at the bottom, something holding it apart at the top so that the chain can go through there and a little ring can be hooked around the little post that we have inside of there. So um, I'm thinking we'll probably change that though. So I'm going to do, uh, show you an example. A while back I did this kind of a setting. Uh, where it's got 12 different uh, prongs and it's got 12 prongs because it's got six rings basically that I cut the tops off of to create the setting and I was thinking I, that would look really nice with a big uh, aquamarine stone so uh, that might be a good way to do it so I'm going to try to do that and see how it comes out but let's see if we can remove this stone carefully I'm going to try and use uh, Start with a T pin to see if I can get it underneath one of those prongs. Gold's a little bit stronger than silver, and so I don't want to uh, put too much pressure on the stone having to pry it. Got it loose a little bit. Let's see if I can pin this one out just a skosh. When I'm doing stuff like this with a T pin, is when I usually lose hold of it uh, whenever I'm prying it with, and then it goes right into my finger <laughs> inevitably. There we go. And I did poke my finger with it when I did that. I told you. All right. So I'm going to clean that off a little bit and see how it looks. I wanted to show you the difference. <laughs> I just used some soap and water and you can clearly see how how much sparklier that is. Um, quite a bit when you wear jewelry quite a bit of dead skin and you know sweat and grime gets underneath the stone and that really cuts down a lot of the light that it sends back to you on the top too so you should clean your jewelry every once in a while. 
<laughs> that's that's so much spark work. All right. So we're gonna have to figure out the exact um, distance around this thing. Actually, when I look at how I did this one, this is a little bit smaller. Did I do it? Did it just slightly smaller? than the outside diameter of the stone and since we have an oval here I can't do it the easy way which we would be to just use pi and I'm not good at math uh, at least not good enough at math to figure out whether there's a formula for ovals that works the same so I'm gonna have to improvise I knew this was a 12 or a 14 by 10 because I used my little stone cutting uh, template here and it's got 14 by 10 right there so that'll help us to figure it out I think so we can draw a little line there set him off to the side so I don't kick it under the table or something I guess I better put this somewhere too so I think the, the easiest way to do it probably would be to use a little piece of wire and get it to fit exactly in that shape. I cut it off to where it's pretty much exactly that size and let's we'll straighten it out and use that to measure that'll be our length for um, for the part that's going to be the base uh, of the setting I'm going to make out a 14 gauge square wire but I'm going to flatten it out a little bit and there's a couple of ways you could do it I'm going to use the rolling mill because I get a nice consistent, uh, consistent uh, result. You could also hammer it if you hammer it really carefully and try and keep it really symmetrical. Um, that would work as well. So let's go uh, roll down through the rolling mill. I usually put it in there part way, tighten it down a little bit. So it needs some resistance. So now. Uh, Roll this backwards a little bit so I get the end of it and then roll it forward. Squeeze it down a little bit more. I'm going to go just a tiny bit. Uh, Thinner, not much. So you can see it's quite a bit skinnier in that dimension now than that dimension. So I'll get that all kind of straightened out and then we'll anneal it so it's soft again. Anneal this, soften it up a little bit. If you're new to this, annealing is the opposite of work hardening basically. Work hardening is what happens to the metal gets stiffer and stiffer and springier and springier the more you roll it or pound it or bend it back and forth it makes the metal um, much harder and the way to reduce that make it go away is to heat it up to the point where it's kind of almost a red color and then let it cool off. That uh, changes the, the atomic alignment back to how it was where it's more randomized is what my understanding is. That 
cool off for a minute. You can see that's all squishy and bendable now. Squishy and bendable. I'm squishy, but I'm not very bendable anymore. <laughs> Just kind of flattening the whole thing out a little bit. Now, this is the length of the piece. Let me file the end of this flat. If you have a miter vice jig, you could use that. So I'm going to cut this a little bit long with the idea that I'm going to file it down just a little bit. Alright, so the way I made this setting last time was I took circles of 18 gauge and spaced them along the length here um, to get uh, all the way to the end. Uh, so they're soldered onto the base, but not soldered to each other. Then, um, cut the tops off of them, spread them out a little bit, and soldered them to each other. That way, um, I could control how big of a flare I get, like that. So I can use the stone to kind of gauge it a little bit. So, I think. <laughs> I did that one a while back. I can I recall how to do it. Let's try it and see. What's the worst thing that could happen? We need to... Uh, this is going to be down here. That. Um, we need some rings that stick up a little ways, so let's figure out a good size to make those. I think this might make some good ones. Let's try that and see how it looks. I'm going to use 18 gauge wire for this. This is just a bail making pliers, but they're handy for making rings. Let's see how that looks. I think that's too big. Yeah, I think that's way too big. All right, let's take a step down then. Let's go. That's, I think that's still a little big. <laughs> like they need to be quite that big. Go with these ones and see. Seems small, but I don't know. This is about as deep as that that one was, and it looks like I used something about that size for these. Maybe just a tiny bit bigger. You know what comes in different sizes of shafts when you need something that doesn't quite match all of your tools? Drill bits. <laughs> so, you might want to, since they're sharp, if you're going to use it to make some rings, wrap a little tape around this part of it so you don't get yourself too bad. Got a new pad yesterday just so I'd have a kind of a flat surface. Let's put these on here and see how they look. Well, 
I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to cut some little tiny pieces. I'll throw this ring in here. That's some pretty close to that same size rings in there already. <laughs> okay, well, let's cut some little, little dinky pieces of solder. <laughs> I always spray things out of position. My patron suggested I get a eyedropper, and I still haven't gotten around to it. That was a good idea, though. Next thing is, we need to get these two ends soldered together. Just keep anything from moving around. I think I'm going to kind of push it into this soft drill, which is called a magnesia block. And I'll just pick solder it right there. So I have it uh, soldered together and I filed a little bit on the bottom to flatten out the excess solder that was there. And um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it with the ring side towards the big taper of the little jump ring mandrel here. I think I'll just tap it a little bit. So I'm gonna round it out a little bit. It's gonna eventually be oval. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to do is kind of flare outwards a little bit. And in order to get that to happen, let's see if this is about the right size. I'm just going to put him in here. Let's make sure he's pretty centered. Let's just see if we can whack it a little bit to... Create a flared out little bit. Should we do it a little bit more, maybe? I don't know, maybe. I think that's probably pretty good. Let's see. Um, it'll be easier to tell if, once we make this a little bit oval. And so. I want to make sure that these are relatively symmetrical on, from either end of the oval. Like if I make the oval this way, I want one ring to be on either end 
and then two evenly spaced. So I'm going to try and get the ones that are. I think this way is pretty good if I go that that route. Usually try to um, get the solder joint on the long side. Uh, I think it's right there. Let's do that. I have an oval jump ring mandrel. Let's see if that works. It sure does. It might be too small. Well, I guess I should be doing it this way. Probably. We need to get it quite a bit more oval. Also do some manual shaping if we want to. It's not going to go this way, but it's an easy way to tell whether I got it relatively close to the right shape. A little bit inwards more. I had to do a little realigning there because I didn't have these right on the ends. So hopefully that'll be pretty good. I'll try all this flat a little bit. So I need to make all of these rings meet. So I'm going to have to individually fold outwards just a little bit. And then pull these together. And try and do it pretty evenly if you can. I didn't do a very good job that time. these to solder well you want to make sure they're touching. Fortunately solder does not jump gaps very well. I think that sits just about right. This we'll find out after we're done. In order to solder these little guys, I think I am once again going to use my little magnesium block. So I'll kind of keep everything in place, hopefully. If you haven't learned how to pick solder yet, pick soldering is a really handy tool to add to your toolkit. So put a link right up there if you'd like to learn how to do that. A, it's really helped me to get better at soldering. <laughs> we have a new pad though sometimes. Chasing the little solder balls around is challenging. 
try and get away from you. Oops, like that one got away from me. Come here. A bit. We'll be cutting these a little bit shorter and, uh, and then we'll uh, start making the bale for this thing. And what we'll do after we cut these down to just a little bit um, above where they split, we'll cut a notch in there with a burr very carefully so that it's got a place for that uh, for the stone to rest in. It's got a, like a little notch in there and then we'll be able to bend those over the top. So. Okay, I'm back again and I did one thing off camera that I should tell you about. I realized the stone was uh, sitting a little low for me to set this effectively. So what I did was I snipped a piece out in the center of this end and a piece out in the center of this end, one at a time, and resoldered them so there was a little bit uh, tighter fit and now the stone sits up a little bit higher like that which is what I wanted. Um, I also did some preliminary uh, marking of where I'm going to put that little groove and I, I did a little bit of burr work to cut that groove in there a little bit. Um, I'm going to probably do a little bit more before we set the stone. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do as far as attaching the the chain. Remember I have that split chain that my mom gave me and she wants me to use it for this so I'm going to. I took two little uh, small, I think it's 20 gauge uh, rings that I made the other day. I positioned my picklet. There you are. I positioned the cut part of it right there and right there. I'm going to solder those two together. And then I'm going to mount them on top of this, on the top edge like that. And then the setting will basically be done except for cleaning up and uh, polishing and then setting the stone. So uh, I'll set the stone on camera, but I'm going to do most of the other stuff off camera probably. So let's get those two soldered together like that. And then we'll attach them to this thing. I may use the magnesia block to keep everything from moving around. But on this one I can just do it straight. into the magnesia block. Should be able to solder that right to the base there without anything moving. Maybe I should make a mark on the center before I get too far along here. That looks pretty good if I can keep it there. like little eyes with the mouth open and yelling. If you're not familiar with the term, it's called pareidolia, when the human mind seeks to find uh, like human faces and shapes, at the random shapes it sees. So that's an example of pareidolia. Okay, the coolest off and see how centered we are. I think that'll work. Looks pretty centered. Okay, I'm going to do some polishing and cleaning up. 
and maybe the, make those grooves a little bit deeper with a diamond uh, burr, a skinny diamond burr. And then we'll see. Okay, be back in a few. So I got it pretty much polished up. Some things I did. Cut a little bit of a notch in here, that diamond burr, right at the point where I want the stone to sit. Not very deep because you don't want to bend it too far or you'll break your prongs off. And then we're going to go ahead and put that uh, stone in there. Oops, I got it on. But yeah, I think it came out pretty, pretty, pretty nice looking so far. Let's see if I can get this in there right. Well, it popped in there pretty cleanly, so that's a good sign. It's sitting straight, so <laughs> that's a good sign. That's always questionable. <laughs> I'm going to start to push these down just a little bit. Kind of opposite each other. So it doesn't try to shift, uh, tilt in a weird way or anything. So a couple of more things that I'm going to do. They do a little bit of neatening. Some of these rings got a little bit distorted. This one in particular here. I'll try and get him to straighten out a little bit. Um, and part of it may be just reducing the length of this one here. Make it look a little less uh, strangely proportioned. But I think overall that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to cut these off a little bit shorter and then round the ends over a little bit with a file and then clean it up with a Dremel. Um, following that, oops. I'll be adding this uh, chain that she wanted me to put on there. And these are open so I can just open it up hook this on. And I think we'll end up with, you know, something that looks like this. Minus a little bit of those prongs and cleaned up with the Dremel and I think it'll be nice and pretty. So I'll take some pictures and put them at the end of the video. Well that was the 12 prong uh, aquamarine setting. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. I really appreciate that. And uh, leave, me leave me a comment as well. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'd love to hear your suggestions. I'm also trying to put together that question and answer video. So if you made it this far in the video, and you have a question about how I do things, or just me in general, uh, feel free to ask the question in the comments, and I will uh, put together a question and answer video one of these days. Uh, the other thing is, um, you might want to check out a few other videos I have. I have over 300 videos now, so it's a pretty big catalog of material to check out. Uh, and if you like what you see, give me a subscribe. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So, um, Finally, don't forget to check out the video description down below. There's a number of important links there. There's that safety link that I've been adding lately. So there's a link to my uh, Buy Me A Coffee page if you want to give me a little influx of cash to help me with supplies. There's a link to my merch store if you want to get yourself one of those nice design idea books um, or some other merch. Uh, there's a link to my website where you can get some pretty jewelry that I've made and you deserve some, so you should go do that. And finally, there's a link to my Patreon stuff if you want to find out more about that. So check out those links, subscribe to my channel, come back again. Thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing.